UNICEF says that at least 45 children were killed in Sunday's terror attacks in Sri Lanka. Officials said that this number could rise in the days to come. A total of 321 people have been killed in the bombings that the Islamic State claimed responsibility for. A day after Sri Lanka revealed the horrific Easter attacks in the country were in retaliation to Christchurch attacks, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has said that she was not aware of any intelligence suggesting the attacks were in retaliation for the deadly shootings on the mosques in Christchurch. Jacinda said, and I quote, Sri Lanka will be in the very early stages of its investigation, so we are simply stepping back and allowing them to undertake those, but we have nothing at this stage to corroborate what is being said. Preparations in Russia are underway to host North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un. Kremlin confirmed earlier in the day that Kim and Vladimir Putin will meet on the 25th of April. Experts say this summit is part of Kim Jong-un's efforts to build global support after talks with the United States have stalled post the Hanoi summit in February. Meanwhile, North Korea has revealed that its leader Kim Jong-un has left for a summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. North Korean state media reported that Kim departed Pyongyang by his special train this morning. Kremlin advisor Yuri Ushakov has told Russian news agencies that the Kim-Putin summit will take place on Thursday in Vladivostok. Protesters in Sudan continue to demand a complete transfer to civilian government. Hundreds of protesters in the streets of Khartoum are demanding that the country's ruling military council hand over complete power to a civilian government. Protesters are demanding that the entire regime close to ousted President Omar al-Bashir be removed from power. On the other hand, thousands more protesters piled onto the roof of a train and packed inside rolled into Khartoum on Tuesday to support activists demanding that the military relinquish power to civilians. About 4,000 protesters, many of them waving Sudan's flag, greeted them at Khartoum's main station as the train arrived from Atbara. Remember, protests in Sudan were sparked by an attempt to raise bread prices amid a deepening economic crisis quickly turning against Bashir's 30-year rule and spreading to cities. <laughs> Meanwhile, African leaders have agreed to give Sudan's ruling military council three months to implement democratic reforms. The decision was taken at a meeting of heads of state in Cairo yesterday. The decision extends a 15-day deadline set by the African Union last week for Sudan's transitional military council to hand over power to civilians or to be suspended from the grouping. The Trump administration has announced rewards of up to $10 million each for information that disrupts the finances of Lebanon's militant Hezbollah organization. The state and treasury departments have said the money will be paid to people who provide information such as the names of Hezbollah donors and financiers, bank records, customs receipts or evidence of real estate transactions. The reward will be part of the program Rewards for Justice which began in 1984. Nearly three weeks since fighting began, near the Libyan capital of Tripoli, the UN Health Agency warned that large numbers of people are sheltering in clinics while civilians continue to be killed or injured and refugees and migrants remain exposed to clashes. The UN Health Agency said that the 264 people have died so far in fighting for control of Libya's capital over the past three days. These numbers include civilians and fighters. The World Health Organization also said that one, over 1,200 people have been wounded since rebel strongman Khalifa Haftar's forces launched an offensive to take over Tripoli. Twenty-five people have lost their lives due to landslide in the southwestern Colombian province of Causa. The landslide was caused by heavy rains in rural areas of Rosas municipality. At least five people have been hospitalized. 
and eight houses were destroyed. A portion of the Pan American Highway was blocked by the landslide in Colombia. President Ivan Duque visited the area and said the government stands with the victims and will provide housing and any other help if required. Russian President Vladimir Putin has followed up on the launch of a new submarine intended to carry prospective underwater nuclear drones, a doomsday weapon capable of causing a devastating tsunami. During Tuesday's visit to a military shipyard in St. Petersburg, Putin watched the departure of the Belgorod nuclear submarine at the Sevmarsh plant in northwestern Russia via a teleconference. The Navy said the submarine, which is designed to carry Poseidon drones and is set to enter service next year. South Africa continues to be battered by mudslides and floods, hundreds of homes in the port of Durban have been impacted by these floods. A total of 23 people have been killed so far. The victims were either crushed to death by mudslides or drowned in flood waters. Torrential downpours have flooded southern and eastern parts of the country since the start of Easter weekend. South African military personnel have been dispatched to help rescue and evacuation efforts. The Med Department has warned of more heavy rain and gale forces till tomorrow. Heavy rain and flooding has caused a wave of debris to gather at the port of Durban on Tuesday. Footage showed on social media shows waste items including plastic bottles covering a large area of the harbour's port. The extreme weather conditions have impacted parts of, an, of the Eastern Cape over several days. At least 13 people were killed in a southeastern province of South Africa during an Easter service after a church wall collapsed on them. Flags in Luxembourg were lowered to half mass after Luxembourg's Grand Duke Jean passed away at the age of 98. The Duke was known to have overseen the transformation of the Grand Duchy into an international financial centre before abdicating and handing over to his son. He was born on January 5, 1921 to Grand Duchess Charlotte and Prince Felix of Bourbon Parma. Days after the devastating Notre Dame fire, French authorities rushed to cover the cathedral with tarpaulin as Med Department predicted rain for the city. The tarpaulin is meant to protect the 850-year-old monument from any further damage. Last week, French President Emmanuel Macron said that France will rebuild the cathedral within five years and that the French people will pull together to save the country's national symbol. Malawi has launched a massive pilot project to test for the world's most advanced malaria vaccine. The vaccine has been developed after three decades of trial and $1 billion in investment. The pilot project aims to immunize 360,000 children across the African nation. The vaccine passed five years of clinical trials across seven countries. Scientists say that if successful, the vaccine could help reduce malaria cases by 40%. Human rights lawyer Mal Clooney once again urged the United Nations to bring to justice is IS fighters accused of sexual violence. She urged members of the UN Security Council to bring members of the Islamic State to justice before it's too late. Clooney said, and I quote, We are facing an epidemic of sexual violence and I believe that justice is the antidote. It is time to make justice your priority so that history can record what happened so that we can stop it from happening again. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. A torch march was organized in the Armenian capital of Yerevan to mark the anniversary of mass killings of Americans by Ottoman Turks in 1915. Thousands of Yerevan residents took to the streets carrying torches, candles and waving national flags. The events which took place in World War I led to the death of 1.5 million Armenians. Turkey accepts that many Christian Armenians living in the Ottoman Empire were killed, but they deny that killings were systematically orchestrated.
Archaeologists say they have found an Australian freighter ship sunk by a Japanese submarine during World War II. The ship has been located relatively intact in waters off the country's southeast coast. The SS Iron Crown was hit by a torpedo on June 4, 1942, while carting ore in waters off Australia's southern coastline near the state of Victoria. The ship sank within 60 seconds, killing 38 of the 43 crew members aboard. Researchers say that they plan to hold a memorial at the site. A Damascus museum on April 23rd, which was a Tuesday, unveiled a replica built by Italian archaeologists of part of a temple altar destroyed by Islamic State militants in the ancient Syrian city of Palmyra. The 2,000-year-old temple of Bel at Palmyra was one of the jewels in Syria's lavish trove of historical monuments, spanning several civilizations before the country's conflict began in 2011. Islamic State seized Palmyra in May 2015 and demolished many of its ancient structures and objects while looting others to help finance its operations.